What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. Mm-hmm. We're coming back to you, I was going to say live, but not really, from... Mm coronavirus quarantine 2020 yeah since we've last since we last spoke and met during the uh super Super booze Booze day Day. we're still it was still going but every week it just gets crazier and crazier yeah i i have not left the apartment since that you have not no i've done it i've won up for a few runs some cdc approved jogs Mm -hmm. where i've maintained my distance you've had to go get stuff for me because i am higher risk Mm -hmm. unfortunately so i'm a little freaked right now i have asthma asthma and i got bronchitis and shit constantly as a kid so i'm a little uh i don't want to fuck with it yeah don't fuck with it so hopefully if you uh are in a similar condition yeah you're able to stay home safely both yeah. uh, health-wise and financially. Hopefully, hey, this is a weird time, man. It's, it sucks. It's a real uh, weird time. Yeah, we're freaked out, too. If you're freaked out, it's normal. Feel freaked out. We're all in this together. Mm-hmm. Or we should be, anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm still a little... My allergies are still killing me, so I've got a little bit of a cough still, so uh, apologies for that. But uh, we're going to talk about the hunt this week. Yeah. And it's funny because right before we started recording, we watched that old jib jab from 2004 Dude, some people watching this they're gonna have born. no idea what i'm talking about yeah. but if you were around in 2004 and aware of the election <laughs> and politics um this was the pinnacle of <laughs> political humor it was this Jib Jab, which I can't believe is a company that still exists. Does it? Because I make I'm pretty sure they to do. I think sometimes. I, I feel like they've been bought out, but I mean, it's still operational. It's still Jib Jab, but it, it's Jib Jab. George W. Bush and John Kerry doing a parody of This Land by Woody Guthrie. It's pretty good. And it's all about how you're a liberal wiener you're a liberal wiener <laughs> you're a right ring nut job <laughs> you've got more waffles than a house of pancakes <laughs> you give them flip flops i give the them song. tax breaks but yeah i know i probably could i feel like i watched I that a ton yeah, when that was the thing it did it, we it was watched. weird how i it like unlocked that part of my brain i shoved away but it just felt right to watch that before this, you know. Yeah. You know, the you know, we're arguing with this side and that side, but it's this land was made for you and me. But it was made to vote for you and me. Yeah. So but anyway, just you know, both sides, you're this, you're that, and that's kind of what this movie is. A yeah, bit. so the hunt is it was uh supposed to come out last year. Yes, it was. And then was delayed because of the El Paso shooting. That and the Another shooting. I can't keep track. Was it, of I them. think Parkland, maybe. It, it wasn't. A, were, no, it was a. It was a quote unquote minor shooting. I think because cool, when I read that, yeah. I wasn't aware of what which one it was. So I just lost. It's track. cool. We have categories now. Yeah, there's uh, tiers of them. Anyway, it was delayed then and was set to come out this year with the tagline. Wasn't it something like it, see, uh, see for yourself? It had the posters had the original date release date crossed out with the the actual release date next to it and said like come see for yourself which i thought was clever i'm I'm glad blumhouse leaned into that marketing and i know jason blum has said that the film that came out the one that you can now watch online you can rent it uh even like it's supposed to be in theaters right now but Mm -hmm. you know because of the virus you can watch it at home yeah uh he has said that that cut that's out now nothing has changed oh okay. they didn't they didn't change anything they just delayed it sure um, because people saw the trailer and kind of assumed and it, i ironically almost and maybe to this movie's um benefit it really stoked the fires of oh this is a movie all about liberals hunting conservatives and it's a which and, it is that's it the plot is, but <laughs> there's a, I think, a layer to it that a lot of people missed in the trailers. And I think the controversy was people interpreting it as a straight up 
endorsement of. Which was interesting because I remember when the controversy happened last year and I read a little bit about the movie and I was so confused as to why it seemed as though more conservative or right-wing uh, media people were the ones in an uproar about it and wanting it to be uh, delayed or canceled. Yeah. Because when I then read the plot and it was liberal elites hunting down deplorables, right. I was like, well, the movie is obviously going to make the liberals the, look like the bad yeah, guys Yeah, exactly. Here. So, so it was... A, it, was it confused me. Yeah, and it, it, it stoked a lot of the debate over, oh, the right lacks media literacy and they don't get that this is supposed they're supposed to be the good guys so it, it was it I not maybe not ironically but it it like fueled the fire of the exact same debate that is presented in this movie over like intellectualism and which I believe calling it a debate is giving it too much credit sure. so let's talk about this movie in a spoiler free way okay for anyone who may be interested in seeing it and is someone watching this like oh I kind of heard about that movie it was controversial what do James and Chelsea have to say about it I would say uh it's fine it's extremely fine it's um it, I think that it's it makes it's it's one of those things that makes fun of both sides and it does so in a very superficial way i think it doesn't uh say anything profound about the the strengths or weaknesses of either conservatives or liberals in america it seems as though it went on facebook and it found political posts that your aunt did and then used that for the dialogue for characters of both sides but if you're worried that your side is going to be made to look particularly bad i don't think there's a i no. think i do think maybe the liberals have it a little bit easier in this movie they could have gone harder on them i think oh i i agree yeah, yeah they i think they should have I, but it's I not i i think that's just a fault of uh not excellent writing rather than i think they set out to try to te like make fun of both sides yeah and i think it also not to discount like obviously you know damon lindoff wrote it um co-wrote co -wrote it, it. Yeah. i'm i should i have his uh his co-writer here i think mm -hmm. craig zobel you know not to discount their their intelligence and their you know obviously they're smart dudes and because they worked on watchmen together which i haven't watched it either um I, i'm so wary of it one because i've heard that the political stuff on there is also a bit like eh. gressel loves it oh, that's good enough for okay me. sure yeah uh, and because I, I adore Watchmen, the graphic novel, so it, it is my favorite superhero thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I love it and I just am so wary of watching anything that doesn't have Alan Moore's blessing, you know? Oh, does it not? The show doesn't? He, no, I don't. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, but he's kind of, isn't he just anti-everything? Yeah, but he, <laughs> like, he, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I love that graphic novel, so I'm just a little leery of any other, like, spinoff of it, but... I don't know. I, I think like the political commentary in this is not as not as like interesting as maybe it thinks it is or it, not as not. nuanced or, inter you know, there's nothing new here. I don't know if it is trying to be nuanced or interesting. Here's what I'll say in favor of this movie is that it's an easy watch. Yeah it's, yeah, it's light. If you don't take it too seriously, that's the thing which is, you fucking shouldn't. Yeah, that's the thing is for a movie that was so controversial, it is not. It's fluff. It is. It's pretty fluffy. It's nothing. Um, like I wasn't offended by. It. I, I I didn't feel any big feelings during it. It just kind of was. You know? <laughs> yeah, like it, it. The pacing is great. Yeah, the pacing I thought was amazing it just never let up it and just the performances kept going and going. are so good like per betty gilpin's amazing oh yeah so betty gilpin is like the main character and she kicks a lot she's of ass so good if you want to see a very good um action like a female action lead this is the movie for you she's so fucking good. i wouldn't be surprised if she got more action -y yeah because like what she's in uh glow she's and in nurse glow, jackie yeah. which i want to watch glow mm -hmm. uh and yeah like she kicks so much ass and a lot of physical stuff that she's doing here and it just seems to come naturally to her um i guess what the the main villain is supposed to be is played off as like a suspenseful reveal for the actor but also her name is right up there in the credits so yeah uh it's hillary swank 
who uh, some people I'm sure just like who, but uh, no, she's a big time actor. I, a lot she's, of Oscar nominated well, actors in this, this movie. This cast is stacked. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. But the whole final act is just the two of them and it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's probably the best part of the movie. Yeah. But the rest of the movie just moves at this clip that uh, it, it surprises you a few times, which we can get into with the spoiler section, uh, which I appreciated. But mostly, I think if you don't take it seriously, you it's an easy way to kill 90 minutes. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's whatever. It's not ch- really challenging much. No. I, it's not going to change anyone's mind about it. Like it, it is not deserving. I don't think of the controversy. Um, if anything, I think I think it's Streisand effect. Kind of, I, for sure. Like the uh, not that anyone, well, some people were, but I, th- I think the controversy itself was bigger than what the movie has to say. Yeah, and honestly, like, props to everyone involved with this for being involved with a movie that became a controversy. That's like kind of a dream of mine. I just <laughs> like when we met. Um, oh my gosh, I'm I'm oh Silent Night Deadly Night. Yes, yeah. The actor from who played who played Billy who played Billy. We mm-hmm. met him at was that Texas Frightmare. Yes. And we, we got to talk to him for a bit and he was super sweet. And mm-hmm. I just said, like, I'm I'm being straight up here. It is so cool <laughs> to meet someone who for a bit just fucking terrified the moms of America. He was the target of he PTA protests. He was the target protests. of PTA protests. Yeah. Pro- and he <laughs> laughed and, and it was it was sweet. We we talked about what that was like being just the subject of this straight up American controversy, you know. But yeah. there were protests outside of movie theaters and I, I said it was an honor to meet him. <laughs> but so, you know, you props to, to everyone involved. It, it, like that's a cool thing when a horror movie causes controversy. It's always exciting for the genre. Sure, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's about as subtle as the purge politically which is to say not at all but the purge is i think trying to say things whereas this is just like huh, it's all stereotypes it's and- very saturday night live kind of <laughs> yeah. satire where like the the purge is a series that i just i i appreciate it existing and i always want to just every time i watch one of those movies i just want to give it that little push further like mm-hmm. let's go further with mm-hmm. this you know yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so sure. That's that's our verdict. If this sounds interesting to you, you could. Ki- I mean, what else are you doing now? So let's move into the spoilers. Go watch it if you need to kill ninety minutes, which you probably do right now. Oh yeah. Although not what? playing it's like, Animal Crossing. It's like fucking twenty bucks to rent, so that might be steep. But also, it was supposed to be out in theaters now. That's so I'll, true. I'll defend the the pricing because it was supposed to come out in theaters. No one's going to the theater right now. I was gonna say if, get a few friends together and split the price, but. <laughs> If you were going to go see it, chances are you were going to spend about that much on snacks and a ticket anyway. Sure. If two of you go, definitely. I don't know. So, yeah. Check it out if you if you want. It's yeah. fine. Uh, yeah. So, spoilery section. From here on out, there's going to be spoiler, spoilers. Uh, we're going to try not to do as much plot summary, I think, because mm-hmm. I don't know how interesting that is. Yeah. 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 We're, we're, yeah, still, even though we've been doing this for how many fucking years. <laughs> like to experiment with the format of our reviews but i mean we can talk about just the straight up beginning where we get our all-star cast kind of what are you talking about on the plane we, on the plane and on oh, the when flip they wake side, up when everyone wakes up and we have emma roberts is, yes. so we think okay she's our main character that's cool she's definitely positioned to be the final girl the main character and it makes sense she's a face and name that we know yeah so when her head blows up i we both were like <gasps> Like mm-hmm. we gasped, and yeah. we're not even like huge Emma Roberts fans, but it that just, fucking I thought got she us. was the main character. I do like the beginning's whole setup of just this baton tossing of who, who the, the main, main character is going to be. I think it's really. I thought that was very funny, and I really enjoyed that setup a lot. It's it's great because it I, it got me every time. After Emma Roberts' head blows up, then it kind of transfers to justin hartley he said yeah who, who's an actor who i'm not familiar with but uh he's a very good looking guy and even in the few seconds on screen even in the few seconds that he's on screen i'm like okay he's gonna be our main character now if i watched the shows that he was in i'm sure i would oh, assume he's in this is us yes okay yeah so okay. big time tv actor and then he immediately gets blown up yeah. And then, so it's like, okay, so they got us twice. Then it goes to, is it Ike? Ike Barinholtz. Barinholtz. Yeah. And they stick with him for a while. Mm-hmm. So you're like, I guess it's him now. And they stick with him just long enough to when he gets shot in that liquor store. You're like, whoa, who like, the I fuck? don't understand who our main character is supposed to but be. But what's great is that this whole time, 
we did meet Betty Gilpin. Yeah, we see her at the very beginning. She making a compass. Oh, is that what she was with a, doing? With a pin and the leaf and the she like magnetized it against her hair and oh, then put it on the leaf and I the water. I didn't realize that's what she was doing. Yeah, so it's like she's already got survival skills because apparently she's what ex. Uh, she served in Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. She reveals at the end. So it's like it's great that they were able to do all these bait and switches, and then when you finally get Betty Gilpin, it's like oh, we did meet it her. It makes the, that little sequence in the beginning makes sense which mm-hmm. i thought was kind of neat yeah yeah and she kicks ass right away i love that she knows that they're lying because she's like they they charge her for a pack of cigarettes and it's too much and she's like a pack of cigarettes is six dollars in arkansas yeah <laughs> you fucked up bitch yeah she's a lot of fun she's so good and she is like she's such good casting for that character because i i'm i'm trying to think of how like delicately they would have had to have cast her especially because she is your lead and you're supposed to empathize with her and the people writing this are I can assume are are good Hollywood liberals you know (laughs) so it's I don't think they have as much sympathy for that kind of person IRL yeah and and it's it's so I think she is so good at bringing a lot of heart to that character and making her sympathetic to everyone watching it and that's why i really don't like the end where uh because we're not doing as much plot summary so i feel fine just jumping to the end sure is while she and hillary swank are laying there after having fought to the basically the death oh that i agree with you i don't yes because hillary swank asks her while she's dying hey are you really what is it freedom for y'all freedom for or justice for y'all justice for y'all which is great uh and i don't know if we're meant to believe crystal Betty Gilpin, but she says, no, you got the wrong person. Right. Taking her at her word, I don't like that because then it's like, see, it's okay to have rooted for her this whole time because she's not she's really. she's not one of them. Yeah. Make her one of them. Yeah, make her I agree. them, I say, in terms of the movie, make her like a conservative person that we were rooting for the whole time. Yeah. That's okay, Damon. Yeah. Like, so I guess just kind of some brief, I'll just give like overall kind of setup in case you haven't sure. watched it or, or listening to this anyway. Uh so like the the very beginning we see a text thread of people mm-hmm. and they're all kind of they're talking about like oh did you see what our dumbass president did today oh but they're talking about deplorables and they joke about or we don't know that they're joking but they say something about oh I can't wait to go shoot a bunch of deplorables at the manor and they're like oh ha, ha, we don't talk about the manor over text and it's a thing where it bas- it just sounds like the setup for the most dangerous game mm-hmm. kind of thing where they're gonna round up a bunch of quote unquote deplorables and hunt them for sport. And that ends up turning into what is called Manor Gate, which I kind of laughed at because it is like a pizza gate. And yeah. A, uh, you know, it's an online conspiracy. And we we find out later that, yeah, the initial text thread was a joke, but it was leaked. And the people in the text thread were a bunch of like CEOs, like corporate CEOs. And they all had to step down because people took that online and ran with it. So there's like conservative podcasters and stuff like Ethan Soup, please. And kind yeah. of not Infowars type uh, podcaster who... Uh, you know, uh, propagates the Mandergate thing. And so the people that they bring to ultimately, they end up doing Mandergate, the people they bring there are the people that they found online who were spreading the rumors and, and feeding the conspiracy theory that Mandergate was a real thing. Yes, so in this world, before anything existed, there was a conspiracy that this was going on, right. even though it wasn't. Yeah, it was a jo- it was a jokey text thread by a bunch of liberal CEOs, including Hillary Swank including and Hillary like Glenn Swank, Howerton, and it got leaked, and they all had to step down from their jobs, and this is their revenge. And then, yeah, they they decide to make it a reality as revenge, and yeah. then specifically chose people online who were talking about it. And I like how you kind of get. Uh, a little bit of variation of the types of people they chose because yes. I think one of them was it dead sexy or one of the one of the characters who gets killed no like the redhead who gets killed uh, early on oh they show pictures she's of all at of like them. a protest like an anti-gay like, protest it's like stop being gay yeah like but then I think the, that Justin guy I think was he the one with a, a hunting picture yeah like a big game hunting so so it's and then varied. Emma Roberts looks like she was she's like a political intern or something that makes sense because I was like oh yeah j- j- just grab them it's from different, around the spectrum different yeah. you know stock characters of 
conservative types. Yeah. And so you do get that throughout. You have like Ethan Suplee, who's kind of the conspiracy theorist. You have some people, a, a few of them mentioned they're like God given right to own uh, seven guns or whatever. Yeah. Stuff and then like that. Our character, Don. Uh, is military because he's got a um a, oh is it like a air force air, air, yeah like a I don't know if it's hunter first airborne but it's like a yeah air, like a, okay a yeah yeah so yeah from around the political spectrum uh the liberals in it who are the hunters uh Glenn Howerton Chief I wish we them. learned more about them that's the thing is I, they yeah because the 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 jokes made at their expense are that they're like overly PC overly woke which are fair those those can be funny jokes yeah. Uh, I wish that they had, there are other things to make fun of I, with liberals. Yeah, I wish that we had gotten kind of like um, on the conservative side, we have the different like archetypes. Mm-hmm. I wish we'd gotten that on the li- liberal side too, but I think it's a bit harder because the group that's arranging the hunt is a bunch of CEOs and sure. they're all going to be maybe the same From the same like type-ish. class. Type-ish. But you could have like one of them is a trust fund kid. Or one of them, you know. Yeah, you could have relatives who aren't CEOs. Or one of them wasn't even a CEO. They were the leader of some kind of charity or something. You know, just mm-hmm. different, like, different types of power. Get some crunchy by... people in there, yeah, you know. Yeah, because yeah. Or political consultants Because mostly the jokes are like, oh, did you just say you guys, like a woman says? Or oh, yeah, Glenn I... Howerton's wearing a kimono and they're like, that's cultural that's appropriation. Yeah, they they overly correct each other. And that's kind of the extent of the liberal Yeah, I wish they had made fun them. of liberals more. I know, me too. Because like, you know, if you listen to this podcast, you know, like we're politically on the left, but I'm not, I'm no fan of like the, you know, quote unquote liberals either. I, I'm like, I want to see them made fun of too. I want, yeah, it's, just... We can, you know. Yeah, I don't want to watch. Not to be all just... South Park about it, but <laughs> yeah, be be more South Park. I just about wanted, it. I wanted a bit more. Like, there, there's more poignant things to say, is what I'm saying about than just um, overly woke. Yeah, about like the superiority complex of what being a liberal can be. And there is a little bit of that in that last scene with Swank and Gilpin. Yes, which again they, I think is they, the best part of the movie. I know th- there were a few times, especially with Hillary Swank, that they just started to like touch those areas that I wanted to further explore like she um when she's being told she needs to resign they say something about you just bought a three or a a manor in Vermont uh and people think you're killing people there and she goes it's not a manor it's a three-bedroom house and but you know that that shit is like you know wealthy liberals will tend to downplay their 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 wealth wealth, because they want to seem in touch and they want to seem um like even um, on, in a weird way, this was kind of a perfect movie to come out during this quarantine because I have been thinking about that video that all the celebrities did of themselves singing Imagine. They meant well, they but meant, but Christ that's the, Almighty. But, but, but that's the thing is that's one of the things that's it's fun and easy to make fun of and what I maybe wanted a little bit more of is it's the idea that like no I'm one of you guys. Yeah. Like, it's, my, it's a three bedroom house. It's not a manor. It's a house that I'm rent it and then you know it's i'm not one of them i'm one of you guys and it's the same idea of we're all gonna get together and sing imagine and guys we're gonna get through this and it's like yeah but you all live in mansions and shit you know they're they're the, they're well-meaning wealthy liberals yeah and we could have done with more jokes i think of maybe them uh criticizing the people they're hunting for not doing more, uh, I don't know, eco-friendly, eco-conscious things, but the people can't do it because they can't afford to. Like, it's expensive to be healthy. It's expensive to be environmentally conscious, and some people just fucking can't afford to do it because they're just trying to get by. I would have liked to see more of criticism from that angle. Yeah. Like, no, you guys are out of touch here. The things you're saying aren't applicable to these people trying to get by. Right. You know, especially them since they're so well off and and rich. We get a little bit of that kind of, and again, this is more the nuance I really wanted where the last scene that we both really enjoyed where they talk about the book Animal Farm because (laughs) they're, this is, oh, this is what I wanted so much more of uh, because I think this is a bit more complex to dissect instead of just like this side thinks this side's bad because of this, but this side, you know, just, Mm -hmm. but we're all the same, you know, it's, they talk about Animal Farm because there's a pig that is part of this, and I'm not really sure why. Oh, the pig that comes out of the weapons crate? Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't is know. it just kind of a joke? I think so. But I, the I, poor I was pig. Sad he got shot. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So there's a pig <laughs> named Orwell, and they have code names to everyone. And our main character character's code name is Snowball. And I remember we were taking notes, and I laughed at that. I'm like, oh, haha, Snowball. And I'm like. I even I think I mentioned him like that's weird because yeah. I was like Snowball's the Trotsky pig like why you know it, so I think it's just interesting that there's already that kind of misinterpretation even if if you're familiar with with the book that then later we do end up talking about and we realize that Betty Gilpin so she she asks well why am I Snowball and Hillary, Hillary Swank, Swank just assumes she does, she's never read Animal Farm and is like, like it's, uh, a it's a reference to Animal Farm, <laughs> Snowball. And she's like, no, I know that, but Snowball's the idealist. He's the good guy and everyone gangs up on him and creates propaganda to get him. So it's like she has this <laughs> layer of understanding that is what the book, you know, she has a better understanding of it seemingly than She than does, Hillary yeah, because Swank. Swank seems to be put, taken aback and doesn't know that. So yeah, that's like a funny part and yeah, good and shading there. I wanted maybe more of that um, that critique of that kind of liberal intellectual superiority or that idea of it anyway. Um, she in that same scene mentioned something about you're undereducated and ignorant and we have to pay for your fuck ups mm -hmm. because you all are so stupid. And, and, but it's you, I, I just wanted more critique of like, look, Hillary Swank, you're a super wealthy CEO. You have more power than all of these people who you've brought here combined could ever dream of, mm -hmm. you know, these are not privileged people in a, in a broader sense. We can argue about, you know, identity privilege and, you know, it's a bunch of white people they bring there and they even joke, like <laughs> we need to have at least one person of color or else it's problematic, which I thought <laughs> was funny, kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, or like when the, when the, uh, I think he's Arabic, the guy who yeah. was like, what, you have me posing as a refugee? And they're like, that was your idea. It was kind of weird when you brought it <laughs> out. Like, that was funny. There's some funny yeah, jokes. Yeah, yeah, I laughed. Yeah. At, there are plenty of very funny lines in this. But, <laughs> um, but it's, you know, it's I, I wanted maybe a bit more examination of this idea that it's very easy for all of these wealthy liberal types to gang up on and take out their anger on people who have you know the, the system's been stacked against them in many ways yeah because i i don't get the sense that any of the people that they brought there except maybe emma roberts mm -hmm. who we see as a political uh intern but besides that everyone else seems pretty not i don't want to like say working class poor, but yeah they're working class yeah. like you know day to day they're not like super plugged into politics unless they're yeah. watching Fox they're the News Obama all the Trump time. Voters. But yeah, you exactly. Know? The Midwest working class who like just feel left behind by the yeah. system in total. And they they do address a little bit. They say you called them deplorables and that's loaded. And, yeah. Which it is. I think deplorables is a, a big uh one of many reasons why the election in twenty sixteen did not go as we thought it might have gone. But uh this idea that it's easy for wealthy liberals who've had access to all the education they could possibly dream of, you know, they have been able to go to, and I'm saying, not saying this is the case for all liberals or lefty types, but there is like, mm -hmm. you know, the liberals who hold power and are, you know, um, who hold power in politics and can have careers as CEOs and stuff. It's so easy to look down upon people who have not been able to pursue an education or have been raised a certain way or they their life is just a totally different experience than you could ever imagine and by perpetuating the idea that these people are irreparably stupid or irreparably ignorant we're not going to be able to change anything mm -hmm. and there is this you know there is there are plenty of people who you will never be able to talk them out of being hateful um i think the closest you get to that is maybe like an ethan Supley in this movie who is like oh you you set up a bunch of fake refugees yeah, you're trying like to get me actor. to fuel either crisis and it's like it's a okay, crisis baby you get to a certain point where you're like all right this person is yeah you're gonna have a hard time trying to get them to to be a bit more empathetic and to see the other side of things but the majority of people it's you know 
you, if you reach out and maybe you have some empathy, you'd be surprised. Yeah, they just want to take care of their families. Yeah, and so yeah, I could have used with more. I that's see, that's what I mean is I, maybe of, yeah. people aren't surprised to hear this episode and hear the two of us specifically being like, no, go harder on liberals. I'm like, yeah, no, they should because <laughs> we need to have that. We need to look at our own, you know our own political side and and things and recognize that like if you can if you just frame yourselves as you know we're the good guys and they're the deplorables they're the bad guys it's not i don't it's It's not not doing yourself any favors yeah yeah and you're just again it's it's the self which is what this movie is too is it's the self-fulfilling prophecy of like oh we think we're so deplorable then fine fuck you Mm -hmm. and And yeah that's the thing is if there is a message to this movie which i don't know how much they cared about it's a little muddy yeah yeah but if there is one i think it comes out in that last scene where both of them uh gilpin and swank accuse the other of not caring what the truth is and just taking uh, what's taking reality and bending it to fit their own worldview, which is what everyone does of every political stripe. They'll read the headline and just like j- just fit it into their preconceptions already. Yeah. So if there's a message, maybe that's yeah, it. Yeah, I, I will say that, you know, we're I mean, we're getting to the end of the primaries and i don't even know how much people are paying attention now because the world is so fucking crazy it doesn't even feel like there's primaries going on anymore uh but in in my own experience and this is what i highly encourage people to to do uh because the internet especially and that's also what this movie is talking about is the internet Mm -hmm. really polarizes us and you get put in a bubble and you you genuinely do get to a place where you think like the other side is irredeemable they're they're all racist they're all this they're all but in my experience um canvassing and and talking to people you realize that people vote certain ways based on reasons you would have never considered before people are not a monolith um and it and it is very interesting to talk to people and get them if you sit down and explain something to someone using their own life having empathy for their own life and their own struggles you realize that like most people aren't voting because they want bad things to happen to other people they they just are you know their self they want to protect themselves and protect their families and they have their own reasons for doing so and it can be hard to to see that when you're just online but when you're talking to people in real life you realize that like it's fucking rough out there man and people are scared and you just need to have, you know, like straight up conversations with people that bridge that kind of gap. And I'm not talking about, com- you know, compromising in terms of like people that are straight up racist. So like, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking people who after the, you know, maybe economic crash in 08 or just generally over the last decade have been having a rough go of it. And they are, they they were sick of how the country was treating them and they're like fine i'll take anything different Mm -hmm. anything different it's just you just have to you know don't see people as a monolith is what i'm saying for sure And again i'm not talking about like be nice to racist people and (laughs) you know let's be no 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 that's not what i'm talking i'm talking about you know people who are maybe economically conservative and that's just why i really wish that she had said yes i'm justice me too y'all. that's like, a big problem on. because that's a, so that's the big reveal or one of the big reveals of this is she tells hillary swank you've got the wrong person yeah i'm not she, crystal may i spell my name m-a-y and the there's another justice crystal for may, y'all yeah. is m-a-e but i wanted her to in the end say no you had the right person yeah because when it's when if, if it's not her this whole time then what it's okay that we yeah like you said it's okay we were rooting rooting for for because she isn't actually a conservative conservative. yeah maybe she's a liberal so it made it like fuck that come on i don't know i just don't know why they did that and i don't know if we're supposed to believe her or but like there's no reason for her to lie there i don't know man yeah i do think hillary swank was uh lying about don being yeah I working think so with them too. yeah i think don just got screwed that was out of sad. it yeah but it, it's when i was thinking about it i thought maybe 
he was in on it because when I when I thought back, although again, this is maybe a misconception that my own misconception I have of this dude who's wearing like an army hat and is all about, you know, he's a conservative guy. Oh, how he doesn't about, get he in doesn't, fight. He doesn't hurt a single person. Listen, and he's very wary of uh, hurting the driver. Oh yeah. He talks to the, the, the driver who was also in on it to like pick them up and take them to the U S embassy. Um, he freaks out when she kicks him out of the car and runs, runs him runs over. Head over. Uh, yeah. oh, fuck. <laughs> and he doesn't want to shoot. Um, there's like the one lady that he's like, you can't shoot her. She's a, she's, she's a, a woman. Lady, Which yeah. I thought was such a funny moment. That was funny. Where, she was like, ma'am, do you think I should avoid not shoot you just because you're a woman? And she goes, no. And just fucking blows her <laughs> up, which I, I enjoyed quite a bit. Yeah. Um, that's the, I thought of uh, the move, the recent, that Mad Max movie, Fury Road, where like women in that are just fucking cannon fodder. And I was like, great, this is the <laughs> representation I want. And it that's the type of thing where it's like, no, fucking shoot, like, you know, yeah. equal rights, <laughs> equal fights or whatever. But uh. But yeah, the whole time he's very he's very reticent to hurt anyone and he's not in the fight at all. And I was like, well, maybe he is in on it. But also, no, he could just be, a, you know, just kind of a gentle guy. He's yeah. a gentle guy. Doesn't want to hurt anyone. He's not a gun crazy nut who just wants an excuse to like go off on people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. That's, it could just be my own preconception about that type of person. Yeah. Hey, want to talk about our sponsor this week, Shudder. Ooh, Shudder. Long time, I'll say friend of the show. We love Shudder. Yeah, I love Shudder, man. I think Shudder is an amazing service. It's the Netflix of horror. Are we allowed to say that? We are allowed to say that. Good, because that's what it is. That is is what it is, yeah. Am I allowed to say that it has a much better horror selection? I think so, Well, then I'll say it because it's true. Well, because, yeah, it has an unbeatable horror selection. It's got, like, just everything. We found so many fun movies through their bloody birthday bloody for birthday, one is one where we just kind of watched it on a whim on shutter and um i'm in love i it is so wonderful Curtis, dude yeah curtis yeah yeah you can stream it on any of your devices too like all the devices iphone ipad roku chromecast all the weird sounding name devices <laughs> <laughs> having shutter will help you also if you're a patron of ours because uh, I mean, we watch Bloody Birthday for a commentary track. We often, for our commentary tracks, turn to Shudder. Because yeah. Because that's where the good horror movies are. Mm-hmm. Because didn't we also do Tammy and the T-Rex? We did. Dude, Shudder has an amazing transfer of Tammy and the T-Rex. It's got the vinegar syndrome uh, yeah, transfer. Yeah, it looks yeah. incredible. And by that, I mean, like, you can see how bad it looks in incredible detail. (laughs) (laughs) It's wonderful. Uh, They also have a new series right now, The Deadlands, uh, which is about Lucy. God damn it. It's about Lucy. It's not about Lucy. She's messing with my notes. Sorry, Lucy. (laughs) It's about the battle uh, between the living and the dead. Uh, It's an all Maori cast. That's so cool. Which I think is very, very cool. So we got some, like, supernatural Maori lore and Mm. monsters and... It looks neat. I really want to watch it. So if you want to get started streaming the best horror thriller and supernatural content, uh, <laughs> stop. You can try Shudder free for 30 days. Go to Shudder.com and use promo code DEADMEAT30. And that's Shudder, S-H-U-D-D-E-R. That's Shudder.com, promo code DEADMEAT30, DEADMEAT30. Our other sponsor this week is Bespoke post specifically their box of awesome offer basically bespoke post just has loot boxes that are themed in every way you could possibly imagine you can even do a little quiz at boxofawesome.com you know to narrow down your selection it's the dilemma of choice kind of thing because they have so much stuff i did their little their relaxation box yeah very i needed that you did need it's it. been a stressful time as of late yeah and speaking of which you can't go outside you know you can't just go to the store so have some boxes of stuff delivered to your door yeah it's a safe way to go i, I did the i used the bath bomb they sent me the other night it was lavender scented yeah it was per- like that just was exactly Lucy what tried I to get in on it yeah she did try and drink the bath water i did not let her don't worry about it but it must have smelled really really good <laughs> lucy um you can uh sign up for free and you can skip a month or cancel whenever and each box is only 45 dollars, but has 70 dollars worth of stuff in there like mine came with a a diffuser like a, a essential oils diffuser 
Nice. Which is very cool. I'm excited to use that. So if you want to try Box of Awesome through Bespoke Post, you can get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and use the promo code DEADMEAT at checkout. And once again, that's boxofawesome.com, promo code DEADMEAT, 20% off your first box. Uh, I really like the fight scene at the end. Oh, yeah. Very I think it's good. shot very well. It uh, uses a lot of fun environmental elements yes. using the creme brulee lighter yeah. and the blender blade. I liked the when she gets thrown through the fireplace. Yeah. It was very cool. There's a fireplace that kind of sticks out. This is very on vogue right now. I wonder if it'll be a thing where we... If it look looks at, out of date yeah, in 10 years. Yeah, it's where years. we look at houses from now in 10 years. Yeah, like the fireplace that kind of juts out the into the middle of the room. wall divider fireplace kind of, But she yeah. gets thrown through it. That's great. Which is I cool. Like, they go through a big glass window and then they go through, about to go through a second one. She's like, no glass. No, and no, they no, open no, the yeah, door. Yeah. <laughs> um, lots of in jokes about Hillary Swank being million dollar baby, which I <laughs> yeah, thought she's was like kind of funny. I wonder, <laughs> I have to think she would have been into it. Because I think if she was like, please, can we stop referencing Million Dollar Baby? What she was there b- besides her like sparring in the background when they were picking? The I don't. I victims? don't think. It, I don't think there was anything else besides oh, okay. that. But just it was a funny visual because when they first introduced you, you're like, wait, what else is Hillary Swank? And I'm like, oh, dude, she's Million Dollar Baby. And yeah. then the very next scene, we see her uh, hitting a punching bag and stuff. So yeah. yeah. Uh, chalk another one up for Glenn Howerton being in a horror movie and getting killed real fast. Man. He, He's like the first one killed. Glenn Howerton gets cast and stuff just to get fucking murdered like Fargo. Fargo, yeah. Which <laughs> is one of the most brutal, like tense episodes of TV. It's so good. Love Glenn. I want to see more of Glenn Howerton. I know. Guy, just or just give me the roles that you write for him. Yeah. <laughs> any role he does or is a role sure. I would like to play. Uh, I did notice that Ma, the woman who works in the Ma and Pa store, mm-hmm. looks very much like Hillary Clinton, has a style with like, with oh. her. Or at least uh, I, I probably more of a 90s Hillary Clinton. Like she first does lady look like Hillary her. Clinton. Yeah. Do you think they're supposed to kind of look like a For villain sure. Hillary? I don't know about the bill because he's. I don't know. He just looks like an old guy to me. But I, I mean, think they're she... supposed to be in Arkansas. Oh, that's true. They, they do lie they're... and say that it's in yeah. Arkansas. Then for sure, it's Phil and Hillary. Yeah, oh, that's... I did. Yeah, they. Yeah, that has she. To yeah, be. she looks exactly like First Lady Hillary Clinton. And that actor, I believe, is also an Oscar nominated actor. I didn't so recognize many. her, but like from something a while back. So yeah, this cast is pretty stacked, man. Yeah, I like. I liked the whole scene where they first get to that roadside store mm-hmm. and. You think, are we cool? Like, did they? And then, no, they've got the gun under the desk and all the food is poisoned. Oh, yeah. And I love that as part of the decoy, they have this loop playing on the TV about how climate change isn't real. Did you catch that? <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, let's clean back up. And they hit play on the TV and it's, it's the like, same clip of the polar bear. It's like another the- big blow to the climate change <laughs> <Yeah>. theorists. <laughs> and they have a, a whole debate about... Uh, um. When they kill Ike Barinholtz and she has a moment where she sees his wedding ring and feels bad. And the guy, I think they're just named mom, mom and pop. Mm-hmm. Uh, and pop is like, don't feel bad. That guy probably uh, says the N word. Probably online. says the N word and in real life too. And, you know, and then he says something about like those people suffered for 400. And then they have an argument about the phrase, those people. And whether and it's black it's okay or African American. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, yeah, I, 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 you know, as much as I found it a bit repetitive, I did like the little arguments between the liberal characters in this movie where they all kind of overcorrect each other. Because I do think there is a a critique to be made of performative wokeness. For sure. And I just was reading an interview with the two writers, um, like right before we started filming this, where they talk about wokeness and the state of being woke and how I think it was Damon Lindelof who was saying I I agree with him that it's you always should be wary of someone who describes themselves as woke I can't imagine ever describing me either because it's like unironically and he says and again it's something I agree with that woke is not a state of being it is a process it's it's, you know, being the best person you can be, which is uh, you know, something we should. Yo, man, to you're be never even. actually woke. The best you can ask for is just to be waking up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he, you know, it's it's not, 
you know, you don't ever achieve <laughs> wokeness. Total wokeness. Total wokeness. <laughs> yeah, right. You go super <laughs> saiyan or whatever. I have no more need for eyelids. I am ne- Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am now your non-problematic fave. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's a process of listening, of learning to be better, of acknowledging when you're wrong. Um, or when your blind spots. Your from blind your own spots. Personal your, life, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think the, the characters in this who are, who, believe they are superior because they are woke are a type of person to be wary of especially maybe people who speak on behalf of other people where they don't have that life experience to be Mm -hmm. that kind of authority you know yeah yeah Uh, there is another line early on that's when the woman is falls into the punji stick trap. Oh, yeah. And then she's saved and then blown back into it, and she just wants a gun to kill herself, and the guy won't do it. And she's like, do it, Snowflake. You fucking Snowflake. I, I laughed at that. <laughs> that was funny. Like, you're a Snowflake for not shooting me when I ask you to. Yeah. The effects are fine. Sometimes they seem a little wonky. Uh, there's some decent gore, but uh, actually, I think the effects work for this movie because it's never taking itself seriously. Yeah. So the fact that the effects are often cartoon like almost like when the guy gets blown up after having a grenade put in his pants like it's just such a uh, it's a non-disturbing gore it's gory you have uh one guy's doesn't a head get split apart or something yeah there's lots of heads blowing up there's lots of head, but <laughs> it's never like a thing where it's like the green room or something where the gore is so uh visceral because yeah. it's real this is very cartoony yeah i think i the movie that i see being genuinely controversial is if it was like this plot but the tone of green room you know where it was <laughs> yeah. like dead fucking serious and in fact at first <clears throat> excuse me at first when it was getting started i was worried about the tone because like the music is kind of jaunty and very comedic and i was like are we just going to be making fun of these conservatives getting hunted and killed and played off like it's not a big deal? But then, yeah, it kept trying to make fun of everyone equally and I, it, I think I they, eased into it. I think they do a good job of maybe assuaging that fear because they have the scene in the airplane first. Sure. And we have, uh, I just always call him Dennis, we have Glenn <laughs> Howerton asking for like... Or no, he gets offered caviar and then goes on a whole thing and it's very limousine liberal, mm-hmm. you know. And they also, the little bits of how they treat their airline staff, which... I think they could have gone a little harder on me that. Me too. I yeah. wanted more of that too. The disdain, because I think it's a, that's a real thing, the disdain that the upper class liberal, you know, who the so-called good liberals who think that they... They're right. They're the good ones that they also do have a disdain for the the working class. And Mm -hmm. I I did like that at the end, uh, the flight attendant is spared or the flight crew is spared and gets to have some caviar finally. Yeah. I enjoyed a lot. I like that they didn't get, uh, you know, I like that she didn't take out anything on them. And I like that for a tiny bit, I was worried that someone on the flight would like shoot Betty Gilpin or something. She wouldn't get a win. Yeah. I'm glad she did. No, there, the end of this had some class solidarity. I appreciated it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, really wish she had just said, yeah, I'm justice for y'all. That's yeah. like the biggest sticking point for me in this movie. Yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah. So I think it's a solid fine. I've seen people say that it's awful and that it's really shitty no, I don't think it's shitty. I don't shitty. think it's really shitty. It's not the greatest thing. Like, it's not clever. No, it's not. But it's kind of fun. Yeah, it's like all the things that we've talked about this episode. I wish we'd pushed farther on them or taken maybe a more specific type of satire and gone with it. Because I, I, I just think of movies that have even done the the good liberal thing so well like i i kept thinking of get out yeah um get out does such good parody of of that because it's i think while get out is widely known for being a uh an allegory for racism and for i think people also forget the aspect of it that is a critique of the good liberal Mm -hmm. and because i just think of the line i would have voted for obama three times if i could have and made even funnier by the fact that Apparently, Bradley Whitford did not get why that was a joke. Oh, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brad, which adds a yeah. meta 
kind of wonderful layer to that. And it's so demonstrative of why that's so funny and so dead on. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at with this. You know, yeah, but there is also the fact that had they tried to be a little more profound, they could have fucked it up. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know? I mean, that's the risk you take. Yeah, so I'm personally okay with it being what it is and just being this super light, super fluffy, just dumb thing. It's a jib-jab. It's a, it uh, is it's a, a jib-jab, jib-jab it is horror a jib-jab. movie. It totally Bringing is. Bringing it back jib-jab to how we started movie. this. This land is your land. This, this land, land is my land. Yeah, you're a snowflake. <laughs> you're a pretentious fuckhead. <laughs> it's like what that's just that's what this movie is kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, we got the 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 jackrabbit and the turtle story, which I thought. Oh, was I forgot very about good. that. Awesome monologue. Yes. From Betty so because at first I'm like, why are we spending so long on the the tortoise and the hare story we all fucking know yeah that it's story a great take but on then the it's then the jackrabbit comes back and murders the box turtles the whole family because the jackrabbit always wins and i saw some people online wondering who the jackrabbit's supposed to be i think it's just supposed to be the the rich the elite yeah yeah jackrabbit always wins yeah yeah that's kind of where i'm at too mm-hmm. yeah i was wondering that too i was like where i couldn't quite piece together the the metaphor but because it she sees a rabbit after she wins. After she kills Hillary Swank. So that's where I got a little confused because if it's. But she also looked surprised to see it. Just like, her reacting there was so funny. Yeah. Just like total disbelief. I wonder if it's almost like that the rabbit was like a bad omen. Like, yeah, she won now and she's mm. going to fly home in the jet and yay. But Rich still win. Maybe, she's, yeah. You know, she's going to be in trouble when she gets back. The, the system isn't going to be fixed, you know, like nothing change changes really big picture. Jackrabbit always wins. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. I think it'll make a excellent kill count when the Blu-ray <laughs> I was out. thinking that too. It's perfect. It's perfect. What do you, do you have a uh, golden chainsaw? Ooh. Can you not think of anyone? Uh, I mean, I love exploding heads and the surprise of Emma Roberts' kill uh, does a lot for me. But I, I'm trying to think. I thought there was like a more gory head thing that happened at some point. I can't remember. The, I liked the blender blade, like the food, oh, sta- or the food processor blade. It was blade. like in her. Yeah. yeah, that was a good was one pretty, too. Pretty cool. So I'd have to rewatch it again because there, but there's so many, and I bet people would love to see how yeah, many. Yeah, good luck getting that monetized. Yeah, that, and that whole video is gonna be blurred out. It's so <laughs> gory. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I'll make it work. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, we'll, I don't know what we're doing next week. Me either. We have a week to think about it. Yes. So we'll see you then. Yeah. We have a week in quarantine to just sit and <laughs> think about what we're going to do on the podcast. But in the meantime, <laughs> you can follow us on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Carebeck, C-A-R-E-B-E-C-C on Twitter and Instagram. But until next time, I'm James. <laughs> I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. <laughs>